We have with us today um, Judge Felice Speck. Her Honor is the Municipal Court Judge who's now retired. Judge, thank you so much for joining us and participating in this project to preserve the rich history of the Municipal Court of Philadelphia. You're certainly welcome. Now, let's start from the beginning. Why don't you tell us where you were born, where you were raised. Tell us about your, your family, your parents, your siblings. Well, I was, I was actually born in Cheltenham, <laughs> right outside of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I was one of four. And then okay. uh, my, my mother died when I was seven. Oh. So my father remarried when I was 15. Mm -hmm. Then I was fortunate to have another brother and sister after that. Okay. So now I consider myself one of six. I always told my stepmother that I really wanted another brother and sister. And luckily I do. So of my siblings, my younger brother is a lawyer. He works for Crown Cork and Seal. And uh, my sister Maureen was a public defender and she was actually a lawyer too. Mm -hmm. Ended up being the chief of the public defenders. So we have a lot of legal in our family. Okay. So I married my husband in uh, 1958. We had five children. Um, he's also a lawyer. <laughs> but I was a school teacher. And I enjoyed that very much. And then I, I was on the Philadelphia School Board for six years from 1976 to 81, a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, my husband was suggesting I go to law school, which I hadn't had any interest in, to tell you the truth, in going to law school. But I decided after living with him, he made the law seem a lot more interesting. <laughs> he would always ask you what you would do in this kind of a situation. I used to say, well, I don't, I don't know the law, Mike. He'd say, well, what would you do even if you don't know the law? What do you think the law should be? And that was very helpful. So I said, okay, I think I will. And it was interesting because the, the, all the men who were then all men in his office were saying, oh, law school's so hard. You know, it's, it's really going to be hard. And I said, well, if you guys could do it, <laughs> I could certainly do it. So I did. I went to Villanova Law School. Wonderful. I graduated in 85, so I was sort of a late bloomer because my children were then 22 to 14. Okay, so you um, graduate from high school. Where where did you go to high school? I went to Little Flower High School. And then you graduate and you began I went teaching? To, I went to St. Joe's University. St. Joe's. And uh, as years went on, in fact, at St. Joe's University, uh, they, they have a law association. So I was the first woman president of the law association. Wow. Which I was proud of. Sure. <laughs> then, I, then I was a part of the Brehan Law Society, and I was the first woman president of the Brehan Law Society. Tremendous. So moving, moving along. Yes, yes. So where did you teach school? I taught school in parochial school. Okay. Re Resurrection and uh, Lady Ransom on the Boulevard. And I taught, I taught uh, fourth and fifth grade. Okay. So I liked that very much, but uh, I was ready to move on. All right. So, so I practiced law with my husband for about seven and a half years. Before so you go to Villanova Law School, and graduate and pass the bar, and then you and went, went to work with your husband. Right. At 1600 Locusts, and I was there about seven and a half years. And uh, then I got appointed to the bench by um, Governor Casey. Okay. So when you were working uh, with your husband, what sort of uh, law practice did you have? Well, yes, he, t he practiced everything. <laughs> we always said he was good at everything. Um, but I did personal injury and I did fair amount of family law. Okay, okay. So when I was sworn in, I was sworn in at home in December of 92 by Judge Zaleski, who was the president judge of the family court, who was a good friend of ours. But I was happy, actually. I had run in for common pleas court and lost. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I ran for MC court, got appointed, and then I had to run. And I was always happy that I ended up in the municipal court. Well, now, you were one of the, um, if not the first, one of the, the first few women who were on the municipal court of Philadelphia at that time. Is that right? That's right. We were trying to recall since, seems like a long time ago, 1992. But we recalled that Judge Gilbert was definitely on the bench. So there weren't that many of us now. Okay. And there weren't that many on the common police court either. That's true. Which that's is true. certainly, fortunately, has that's true. changed now. So tell us about your judicial career. Well, um, the municipal court, as you probably have always heard, is kind of a family-oriented court. We only had 25 regular judges, and at that time we had 30 senior judges, which I'm sure has diminished by this time. Mm -hmm. But uh, everybody was very friendly. When I first got on, I, 
I hadn't spent a lot of time in this before practicing, so um, I asked Judge Silverstein, since I had a whole month before I would be sitting in January, if I could uh, go around to the various courtrooms and see how the various judges operated, which I did do. Mm -hmm. And it was it was really very interesting, and everybody had a different style. Everybody had a little bit of advice, which made me sort of closer to my fellow judges right. here at the time. Um, and and a number of those judges have since died, but I always think you know, very pleasantly. Judge Merriweather and Judge Rattaka, Judge Conroy, and uh, Earl Simmons. Absolutely. They all had advice. Okay. So by the time I went to sit on the bench in January, I really felt good about it. Like you were I, ready to go. So I knew what I was doing. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> sort no, of. no. That, you, you did. You, you did. Um, so what was it about municipal court? What uh, was the kind of cases that you liked? Were there any things that you disliked or? Well, I always said landlord tenant was tough. It's kind of like family law, you know, because right. everyone thinks he or she's telling the truth. And sometimes it's like, you can't all be telling the truth, you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be a bad guy in there somewhere. And uh, I used to say if I were elected to sit on uh, um, landlord tenant court, I think I might reconsider <laughs> and stay in practice. But but what I liked is that, that uh, we rotated. Initially, everybody rotated. Right. Then, then eventually, people wanted a, a separate courtroom. But I liked to rotate. Okay. So it was a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So you'd be over in civil for a while. And you'd be, so I ended up mainly in criminal. Okay. Uh, which, which I did like. And I guess probably <laughs> I liked the idea that uh, we used to always say, Worst comes to worst, and you make a mistake, they can always appeal <laughs> to the common pleas court. So you're Absolutely. not sending somebody away forever and making a bad mistake. So maybe that's being a coward. But no, they gave you a comfort zone. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But but I but I I felt like I brought a, a lot to the court in that I was more mature. I had a lot more experience. I had had five children while I was in law school. My first year of law school, my oldest daughter got married. <laughs> I remember so it was get, having somebody get married and then having like a 13, 14 year old. It was a little hectic, but yeah. it would have been hectic any time. Now, in addition to um, your job in the municipal court, you were also involved in civic activities in your community, right? Well, pr pretty much I think from the, my, my St. Joe's and Bray Hunt, I'm on the board of a center called Cranolis Spiritual Center up in the Northeast, which is an extraordinarily nice little center. Mm -hmm. And I was on the board of Cora, which does provides extra services uh, for children in non-public school. So I was there for many, many years. Miscellaneous other boards, but they're the two I'm particularly proud of. In addition to that, you're raising five kids. True enough. Yeah. <laughs> They're pretty well raised by, <laughs> well, by this time. It, it, I now have 11 grandchildren. So. That is wonderful. That is yes, wonderful. Yes. So I've been very fortunate. Absolutely. Well, tell us about your legacy on the uh, the court. You're one of the, the first few women to uh, to join the court. Uh, you were on the court for how long? Uh, 21 years. Okay. And I, I was on the, um, you know, we have our our conferences twice a year, so I was on the conference committee for several years with Judge Cosgrove and then with uh, Judge Gilbert, which was, you know, planning the kind of <laughs> CLEs, <laughs> right. extrajudicial studies that we should have. Uh, I, I think mainly because I'm sort of a common sense judge, I think maybe I, I, the feedback I get, I have a reputation, is that I always try to be fair but not harsh or uh, you know, and I, I could make mistakes, but uh, you know that I would try to at least listen. And I think uh, that was something I learned early when somebody criticized me for not listening. <laughs> it's on a, some anonymous person, and I thought, not listening—that's a terrible thing to say. You know, so right. I, I, I think I always say that to our judges. You know, you, you try to be as fair as you can, but you really want to listen to what people say, so they have a chance at least. Even if you roll against them, at least they had the chance to have their day in court. So, mm -hmm. uh, so if that's a legacy, being an early woman and one with maybe a, an extra dimension that you know, some men don't seem to have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how would you like uh, your tenure on the Philadelphia Municipal Court to be uh, remembered by future generations? Well, I guess 
it, it certainly the, the women can do anything they want and this is a big generation for women but my husband was very instrumental in that but not only with me but with our daughters we always say he never differentiated he, he, he's the one who said you should be a lawyer same thing to my sister and you, you know you you can do it you, but you can do it here take this do that mm -hmm. and i think that, that that's very helpful to say you know get your find your area of the i like to camels saying your find your bliss and then follow that you know so find out what you really think you're good at and would like to do and then do it and don't let don't let anything dissuade you whether it's your sex or your color or disabilities or anything like that you know you can do it that's amazing so um as you look back on your your life um high school when you were teaching law school um practice on the court what sort of mentors um, assisted you along the way? Well, that's interesting because my main mentor is really my husband. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say, but uh, you know, if we have other friends who would be uh, uh, supportive. Uh, it's interesting. I can't really think of any women mentors except maybe my sister, uh, who she totally loved being a lawyer, and she uh, she did go to law school before I did. I recall. I'm trying to remember. Like mm -hmm. There's a little difference in our age, um, but she was she was brave. Like she was uh, uh, always highly well thought of in the legal community, and right. I was always proud. They was like, "That's my that's my <laughs> baby sister." So, in a sense, she was my mentor too because we we interchanged ideas and support. Sure, sure. So, um, thinking back to when. You started practicing law. Um, I might say Judge McEwen, he was one. <laughs> oh, yes. Absolutely. He taught me in law school, and he was just a particularly extraordinary guy, a wonderful judge. So he taught you at Villanova? Yes. Do you remember what courses? Yeah, it was criminal trial practice. Oh, wow. Okay. No wonder you enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, it was good. <laughs> that's, that's good. Um, as you think back to the time when you were practicing, do you think the practice of law has changed today? Well, I think so because I think you really have to specialize, and you have to be very careful not to take cases that you can't handle. Mm -hmm. Everything's changing so much, and of course, the, the whole the digital world is very different. So I, I think uh, young lawyers just grow up with all this. That's what they've always had in school. But I think that you, if I had to be thrown into uh, back in to that world, I think if I didn't have a really good staff person, even filing papers, you know, you have to be sure. That that you filed it right, you file it on time, because you can lose cases so easily doing that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of person who's used to send in hard copy. Right. You know? <laughs> so I would, I would have to adjust. You're like I mean, me. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm still practicing, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't take I, a lot of cases. I just refer to people who I think are mm -hmm. better in that area. Okay. They know what they're doing, and I'm not going to spend time looking up the latest law at this time in my life. But, I understood. Um, if you were speaking to a group of um, new judges, what what advice would you give them? Well, I think they should remain humble. I think one of the problems with judges, and especially if you're very young, which we seem to have a lot of young judges, they, they really don't have as much experience. So they don't get cocky, you know. And, you know, you are really just an instrument of justice. It's not you. You know, they call it robitis. Ro you know. You, you're not you personally are really not that important. This is a very important role, important job. So, you know, again, to listen, be careful, and don't be afraid if you don't know something to ask a colleague, you know, to help you out. I think that's one of the things new judges need to. That's what's so helpful to me when I was able to go around to different courts and get advice. And then, you know, we encourage each other in the municipal court, particularly. We would encourage each other to check on each other. You know, I mean, if, if you you've got a problem, you could call somebody and say. I like really like to roll this way, I and mean, this is where I again, is there something that I don't know that I'm rolling wrong yet? Mm -hmm. And you have to be not have a lot of pride and not worry about looking like you don't know something. I mean, so I would say humility is probably the best urge. Now you talked about the family um, atmosphere that you felt as a member of the municipal court. Uh, tell us about that. Well, I said it probably originally started because of, uh, 
guess Judge Silverstein was his yeah, president. Judge. judge Glancy had been the first president judge that I know. And always a wonderful man. I was very friendly with him. I think Judge Silverstein went out of his way to create that kind of atmosphere. You know, we had we initially had some socializing. I think when we had the conferences, that's where mm -hmm. we would sit down and get to talk to each other and just about nothing, or else maybe talk about continuing arguments on some of the legal issues. Uh, but it, it just created a, a, a homey, friendly atmosphere. You know, nobody seemed to be competing with anybody else, you mm -hmm. know, or be critical of anybody else. Just to, uh, maybe, maybe it's because it's small, and, uh, you know, or uh, not having been on CP Corp, of course, I know they have different sections too, and I'm, I'm sure they're <laughs> have an equal camaraderie, right. collegiality, but uh, uh, everybody, everybody was very funny, and I always thought you could call them. We had a, also had a way where we would exchange if if we had our schedule and didn't fit in, and you needed exchange with somebody, you could call the way we were arranged. You would call and ask them to trade with you. Mm -hmm. And that people were always great about that. If they could, if they didn't need the day, they'll trade you, and so that you can you know, make your appointment or change your vacation or something. So it, you just you just always felt that you could ask anybody. Right. right. Do you maintain contact with your colleagues from the bench? Well, I, I see them at the bench bar, some of them who were, who were still going down there. And then I, I, I go, we always get in, senior judges get invited by Judge Nyfield to the the opening dinner of the conference and that first night conference. So we, I always go to that. Okay. Catch up with everybody. That's good. That's good. That's nice. Now, um, over your illustrious career, I'm sure there have been many honors and awards. So. Why don't you tell us about those? I don't think I really have been a lot of honors of war. Just, yeah, you know, ones that are not, but, you know, like one funny one. You know, but you get a lot of these honors that are just sometimes I always say you, you, you need to, to uh, swell the crowd so you, you want to be able to. <laughs> but one I really enjoyed is it was the Catholic veterans, war veterans, and they gave me this wonderful plaque and it said, to the Catholic Man of the Year, <laughs> I said. They said, "Oh my goodness, let us take it back." I said, "No, I cherish it," because <laughs> right. I was the first woman to get that award exactly. too. So that would, that would be one of my favorite awards. But you, know. but you also talked about you were the first woman to chair um, In the Brown various... Law Society yeah, right. for a couple right. of years, and then for the uh, we, then we had two year terms, and then the St. Joe Law Alumni. Yes, I I. So, St. Joe Law Alumni, um, tell us about that. That's uh, well, they have they uh, they have uh, a yearly dinner and a, and a yearly special award in the springtime, and that that was originally started with Judge McClanahan, and that, that was an award I got the Judge McClanahan Award. Mm -hmm. Well, then my husband used to always say it's like the uh, I told the you generals. you were too modest. <laughs> <didn't it? laughs> the generals giving each other awards. <laughs> But, but because Judge McConaughey had been like the founding judge of that of that organization, and anyway, that was it's still a school that Judge McConaughey had worked. Uh, but you know, for somebody who served the, the university and the, and the law community, so my husband had been a president too at one time. Okay. But they used to have before I was ever even a lawyer, Judge McDermott, Judge Kavanaugh, Chuck Peruto, and they'd be at these dinners, and it was almost like a roasting dinner because it's like the comedy show. And they would get up there and needle each other, and everybody totally enjoyed it. That right. Little by little, they began to take themselves too seriously. But we always <laughs> said, "Could all could all days." <laughs> everybody come just to hear them. <laughs> My husband, who was also quite a comedian. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and then you're in the St. Joseph Law Alumni, well, chair of the St. Joseph Law Alumni Association, and Villanova. It's the your. I wasn't very active in Villanova. Okay. <laughs> I got, I got my. Because you were my, going to law school and raising these uh, five kids. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 there wasn't, it was just a question of getting back and forth and, uh, <laughs> and studying in the wee hours of the morning. I can imagine. I can imagine. That's quite a legacy. So, uh, is there anything that you would like to share with us? Uh, anything that I. May have neglected to ask about your career. Or... I don't think so. I think uh, you've pretty well covered it. Maybe over covered it, but 
I appreciate it, nevertheless. Well, we appreciate you, and uh, you know, the, as I said, you're far too modest. I know you've left out quite a few things that uh, we should know about, but uh, I understand that that's you. Well, <laughs> whatever that's whatever it is is fine. I'm looking up there, Tom, at that picture. That's the uh, first group of municipal court judges, the, the modern. Yeah, <coughs> the judge glancing in the center. I have a copy of that too. Yeah, that's the original seven. <coughs> judge Murphy, Judge Gunley, Judge Margaret Margiotti. Margiotti, yes. Judge Latrone. Judge Simmons. Yeah. Judge Sanders. Yeah. Judge Murphy. Judge Murphy actually ended up being my neighbor. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Well, you understand this is the fifty-year anniversary of, of the municipal court. Is that right? Or was it 75? 1968. Oh, 68, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. It, actually, the Browns are 70. 70, 70, 70. Yeah. 1968, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, happy, happy anniversary. Thank <laughs> you so much well. for participating in this program. <laughs> You're you welcome, know, we, Tom. <laughs> we really appreciate you all right, thank and you. all you've done. Thank you. I appreciate that, too.